Hey guys, it's Luke, Sigmaster Luke, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to find Roblox Studio, what Roblox Studio is preferable for, and how to use some basic tools in Roblox Studio. So first, to find Roblox Studio, you go to Start, then you do All Programs, scroll down until you see a folder called Roblox, click it, and then Roblox Studio should be right there. Now we'll open up Roblox Studio. And now here we are on Roblox Studio with it open. There are three boxes that you should um, know about. There's Explorer, which is to the right, right here. And there's Properties, and there's also Output. If you're just gonna be doing building and no scripting, then you don't really need this Output box, so we can close that. And for Properties and Explorer, um, you'll need those for building. They're quite useful. To find these boxes, if you don't have them, you go to where is it? View. Then just click Properties, and I'll open the Properties box. And same with Output if you want it. And Explore. So, one reason that you want to use Studio is for the Edit Mode. You see here that when you view a game that is uncopy locked, or one of your games, you can enter the game in Edit Mode. And also build mode if you like build mode. Personally, uh, edit mode is um, better because the game starts out paused and none of the scripts or the physics engine is running. So you can make changes to your game without the game running, which is very useful when you're trying to make stuff. And it's just good to get used to starting to use edit mode if you have never used edit mode before. You can plan on making a bunch of fun and exciting games. Let's go and my grassy field place, and I'll show you guys some tools. Something I was working on. Tornado script. So, basically I have a, a giant green base plate that I think I had to edit to make it a little bit bigger. You can see right here that the explorer is like your uh, hierarchy of all the things inside your game. Workspace is basically anything that you can see in-game. If you, oh, one thing about edit mode is that you don't have a character. That's going to be hard to get used to, but it's better in the long run. So this right here is my base plate. It's quite big. In the properties box, you can see all the properties of it. You can see that it's 2048 by 2048. That is um, how wide it is. I change that down to 500. It'll be more reasonable. So I just resized it and it got a lot smaller. It's hard to tell because uh, the quality is not too good. So I'll show you guys how to insert a part. A part is just uh, another name for a brick. So right here you see the brick. You can move around in edit mode by using the WASD keys or the arrow keys and then uh, you hold right click on your mouse to rotate your mouse to rotate the camera and normal click is for dragging things and all this so here are three main tools right here the resize where you can resize bricks really easily it's really nice really useful then here's the move on axis tool which will just move parts on separate axis XC, XI, I don't know the plural of axis but that, that lets you move them along axis and this is just the basic tool for dragging stuff around also if you have multiple parts you can select them all by just clicking and holding, dragging a box and there you can see I have all the parts selected and you can move them all together with the axis tool and with the resize tool you don't resize them all uh, you resize them all separately which isn't too useful but that's alright it's still nice and useful for the axis tool also we have right here is the anchor tool and we have the lock tool both of them are very important very important when you're making a game the lock tool prevents you from selecting things. You can tell um, 
So I'm just on the normal tool right now to just click and drag, you know. The base, I cannot select it. I cannot click it in game. That's because it's actually locked. And I can unlock it by selecting the lock tool and then clicking on the locked item and I, it is unlocked. Now I can select it. You can see here in the workspace hierarchy of Explorer that I have selected the base. Um, so yeah, now now I can click it, which is um, not too good. So I'm going to lock it again. Because if it if it is unlocked and I'm trying to build something, I might accidentally move the base plate and it'd be really hard to get it back to where it was. So I'm just going to lock it so that it's just easier to work with stuff. You can see when I'm doing this, I'm not selecting the base plate, only these parts. Only these parts right here. If I wanted to lock one, I can just lock this one. And now when I make a selection box, you see I didn't select that one that I locked because it's locked. And all these parts right here, unlock it. All these parts right here, if you look in the properties of them, they are not anchored. That means in game, when you start the game, these parts will just fall onto the ground because I, I just raised them off the base plate. I raised them off so that when the game starts, they will just drop and that'll be it. That's because they're not anchored. If you were to anchor one and then start the game, all the others would fall except for this part because I just anchored it. The base plate is also anchored so that your entire map doesn't just fall off. Um, so if you want to build something that's uh, not destructible by rocket launchers, then go ahead and anchor it and the parts will not move. That's pretty much what it does, is anchoring a part means that it will not move and ones that aren't anchored will collide with physics and, you know, move around and everything. But they're still lock they're still uh, selectable if they're anchored, so you can build some cool anchored structure and, yeah. And that pretty much covers all the simple basic tools. That's it for Roblox Studio. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.